quick video. Hey everybody, it's G-Man here. I'm in my house. Nye is back from Florida. And we got special guest David Kuhn. Hey everyone. <laughs> so we're just here chilling out. I'm on my walker and getting around really good now. Getting around really nice. And uh, they just arrived probably about, I don't know, half hour ago, maybe a little bit longer. Yeah, it was a good drive, guys. Hit the border, no problem. Drove straight through, no problem. Hit the border again, no changes. I got Georgia down. No way. I don't know about Atlanta, but how did you? Georgia. How did you? How did you get Georgia down? Did you? Did you? See, did you change those videos to part one, two, I three did. for me? Yes, I okay, did. Okay, refer to what's my channel? <laughs> Nias corner of the universe. <laughs> Nias corner of the universe. What's the title of them? Georgia trip one, two. Well, three. I made it. I made it part one, part two, part three. I think we should change the titles to the same thing. Part yeah, maybe so. Maybe. All right. Well, look for something about Georgia part one, two, three. From right about now, datish. Yeah, because well, it's such a good PR. But see how I did it. I said it part one, and then you. I left your title, part two. So they see the part one, part two before anything. So they, they should get it. Hopefully. But it. well, you can tell our, our audience real quick. It's not. It's not live, by the way. But how? In a brief, condensed version, how did you conquer Georgia? Well, it was oh, Stephanie. Was, it was all Stephanie, wasn't it? That was it. That was a tough one, because when I got to Madison, which was what two hours in, maybe. To, I hit a wall for multiple reasons, and then G-Man and Stephanie talked me into calming down and staying in Madison. Yeah, getting a hotel. And then David Kuhn, who lives in Georgia, not very far from Madison, came to the hotel, and I was able to ground and kind of get my balance. I'm still drowning, but I got my balance with him because at that point, when I was grounding with you, you were still Kowalki too. So and that's and the and the, uh, well. the second motel was really what did it right because you're in the first one the first one was bad because my vibrations were low and the air conditioner didn't work and the people were upset and it was grimy and the room nothing the room didn't the air conditioner didn't work in the room the water didn't work in the room i said okay this isn't going to do because with as you know without air conditioning oh I you've got to have it ice cold and Absolutely. if i can't sleep what's the point of getting mm -hmm. staying in the hotel your cranking eye is not good so yes that is that's not a good plan so i called stephanie and i told her this time her for her to find the hotel because i knew her vibrations were higher mm -hmm. so she found one that was about the same price right across the street so literally right across the street i do you not how about that so i got in the car centered Crossed the street, walked in, bright, shiny room, bubbly lady, beautiful room, beautiful place. Wasn't it beautiful? Yep. Is it because he came to the You remember what one. brand it was? Because you were in um, Red Roof Inn, which was good. I think it was, it was quality. Quality, I believe. quality, quality Inn. Inn. So it was very quality. Yeah. It was quality, and Red Roof was bad. <laughs> That, that's Red really bad. That, that, that's surprising because Red Roof is usually pretty good. But it really had nothing Franchise. to do with the brand. It had to do with yeah. the vibrations, and it could have been any. The owners and all that. It, yeah. Everyone's different. So. So and then I then I was able to. That was the first step, really, to stop the, wh which way should I go thing, mm -hmm. and just settle, and then go to the better hotel, and then David came in, and we just visited and talked for a while, and I finished grounding with Georgia at that point, so I really got. Kind of a handle. I didn't understand it, but got the vibration right, right? Mm -hmm. And helped him out with a whole bunch of stuff. He did it super fast, too, by the way. He's a good good student, this guy over here. He listened fast. So So maybe he holds the record now, right? I don't know. I just I, came up for the snow. Oh, that's what it was. <laughs> you know, interesting, too, as uh, you're complaining about the heat. As soon as you left, a cold front came in. As soon as you come back, it's hot again. It's weird, you know. That's because I am worried about it being too hot, and I bring it with me. See, that's Thanks. why you should not worry. Thanks a lot. Thanks for bringing the heat. You're very welcome. Very welcome. So but they, I also tend to bring rain. So you yeah, gotta admit that I you do, do bring a lot of I rain. Do bring a lot of rain. So a lot of rain. A lot of rain. So then after that, the next day, David and I took off about eight ish, I guess, somewhere now, and started with cut grass, and then there was trees and. What was the name of that BP? Inspiration. Oh, uh, Inspiration? Invi invi in invigorate? Invigorate? Invigorate. Or invigorate something. or something like something that. But like that. that's where we got gas. And I, that's the word I saw. Happier mm -hmm. and happier. Good. And I saw really nice dairy. And then I saw some really nice farms. And mm. really, it, at the point that I really started to get it was the farms. Because I spent my high school years in... Kansas, where there are really, really good farmers, it's a really big deal. And this was still this was still Georgia, right? Still in Georgia. Okay. We're just what 
15 minutes outside of Madison. We're about the same place oh, I wow. the wall the okay. day before. Mm -hmm. But now I'm going, okay, now I've found something. And I followed the farmers, and that's where I found that those people have this, in Georgia, all races, color, creeks, didn't matter. They all have a deep, deep love of the earth. The earth, you know, the farmer mm -hmm. earth and mm -hmm. animal husbandry and hunting, real respect for the animals and the earth. And in that moment, that's where I could fall in love with them. Mm. And I went, oh, okay, I got this. Because we found, I could find commonality there. Sure. And then I came back to the negative vibes to figure out what they were, standing on the good vibes. Mm. Because if I stand in the good vibes, then I'm grounded in them and I don't go kowonky and crazy. But then whenever I found out that there, that state really was into wars and fighting, that's why they threw oh, me yeah, so big, much. Oh, yeah, big time, yeah. Because I don't do, <clears throat> with my history, I don't do violence at all. I haven't done violence for a very long time. I got rid of it a long time ago, and I don't allow it in my life. So that kind of insane, intense violence that they had really spent all of the existence of the state of Georgia exploring, that's what hit me so bad. And I went, oh, okay, well, I can see it. Then I wanted to see why they did that and how they... Yeah, how big, they made it stronger and how they made it so powerful. Big time state. Confederate state. In fact, David, I don't know. Do, do they still got the Confederate flag on the state flag? They've changed it a little bit, but it's it's a smaller version that's similar. Still up uh, there, huh? Isn't that, isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? Yeah, it's it, not but, exactly the same. But you know what? If I when I looked at it from the point of them protecting their land, you know, because that really they picked that up from the Native Americans. Yeah. But then they also brought it with them from Europe as well. Yeah. Because a lot of those people brought that love of land, and it, land ownership was a big deal. That mm -hmm. was a big, big deal. So you take that that European influx of them not having the right because of the hierarchy over there, mm -hmm. of not to be able to have a land. So they were already set for this vibration that would create this state to have what they want. So And then you put that with their learning from the Native Americans of the respect of that land. You combine it together... And that's really what a lot of the fight was about, was about the land itself. And you know, it was the Indians and the British and each other yeah, and a lot the of, North. A lot of bloodshed. And then each other. Yeah. You know, it, it just they just kept looking at it and creating it. So whereas the Civil War was a part of all, you know, the you know, a bunch of this United States, mm -hmm. a lot of it did the Civil War and then moved on. You know, it's like, nah, it's an event. They hung on to every one of those fights and then they just added to the whole it's just like um like you as an entity you decided to be a long-term human mm -hmm. and i decided to be what i am right. you know as an energy being that state decided that they were really going to really take a look at what a group of people would react to all of this aspects by really ramping it up and i remember on my earlier trip to the north and I drove through it on a bus and I woke up from a dead sleep when we crossed the Yeah, border. I remember you talking about that. And yeah. then by Atlanta, everything fell apart on that trip. Yeah, Atlanta. Now, you may have conquered yeah. Georgia, but have you conquered Atlanta? I don't know. We'll see. I veered away from Atlanta. We'll see. I tried. Uh, we'll yeah, maybe veer away we'll from see. it. Yeah. I don't but at Atlanta. least with Atlanta, now that I've got Georgia, which is fine because I do know reptilians and they don't bother me. They're the ones that are there. Yeah. So since I know them and I know Georgia, Worst case scenario, I could drive into Atlanta and drive back out, drive back into Atlanta and drive. Yeah, back well, there out. is a there is a you loop you can drive around, but you still feel like you're in Atlanta. I mean, it's. Yeah. Uh, I still want to, you know, I'm just like that. You want to test yourself, I don't you? Fix it. You want to go. You want to go right through the that's gut of Atlanta. Right. I do. I want to fix it. Mm -hmm. I wanted to fix Georgia, and that's the reason why I kind of set up everything, and he needed stuff, and mm -hmm. so it all worked out perfectly. So all the creators got what they wanted, and good. Good. for the first time, I really had a really good conversation with the state. And yeah, I had never cool. had a conversation with the that state. I knew cool. that they had consciousness. I knew that, but I just never took the time because. Well, what about they didn't care. what about South Carolina? No, I never had. Never had. A you just felt good vibes from the yeah. start, I guess. Yeah. yeah. David. So I just pretty much went like that. What did, what did you feel about South Carolina when you entered? The, oh, I love South Carolina, yeah. especially with the water. The water is a big a big draw for me because it's, it reminds me a little bit of Florida, Central Florida, where I came from, and the mm -hmm. East Coast, and all. Um, so it's big. As far as uh, my perspective on going back to Georgia on the trip, my intent, I, I decided, uh, okay, a three-hour trip, let's make it seven. Because <laughs> that's about what it was. Yep. And we went through every little town. And my whole perspective on that was, actually, I'm looking at it now and realizing what I had done was I was connecting with 
people. I was connecting with the trees. I was connecting with everything, waving at people and smiling and looking and just rubbernecking it. And I think what that did for me, of course, it got me and got a lot closer because I'd never gone through those that parts of uh, Georgia also. But I think it helped you as well on mm -hmm. that. And that's just. I, I love rural driving, driving through little oh, little towns so and the rolling was hills. Yeah, yeah, it really it's was very beautiful. very relaxing, and it e was very even though you're in the car, you can still connect. You know. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I had no idea. You know, everybody talks about Georgia peaches. Nobody talks about Georgia peanuts, and there are peanuts everywhere. Oh, Jimmy Carter, that's what he was known for. Well, yeah, but Carter was, but not Georgia. No, I oh, Georgia, know. yeah. I didn't from know that. Carter yeah, he was, was from yeah. Georgia. Yeah, sure, sure. I knew Carter. Plain, White peanuts, Plains, Georgia, wasn't it? Or Plains, Georgia? I don't remember. It was Plains, well, Georgia. I just never connected. His brother actually uh, had... Billy Carter. Bubba Beer. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. He sure did. Bubba Beer. Of course, yeah. I got the beer on the mind, you know. <laughs> you can, you can still one. buy cans on eBay, the collector's yeah, items. Really, oh, yeah, they're expensive. Yeah, we well, don't want to drink it, but you know. So tell everybody about how it was with Michelle and Sandra. Oh, it was awesome. It was seriously awesome. Those got since what? What has it been like? Three, four months since I saw Michelle at her place, mm -hmm. and she has done from our conversation. I was there a couple, two, three days. From our conversation, she has like moved madly to exactly what she wanted to do. She's right on target. Um, everybody that I've talked to so far is really doing exactly what they had intended to do. I cannot hmm. believe how well everybody that is doing. That is great. I think he's doing the fastest, but he was the slowest to get to me. His mm -hmm. prep time was uh, pretty, well, not really, because some of the other ones took years to get well, there. Well, once he put his mind to it, though. I was, pretty months, adamant I, about, I was pretty adamant about taking, I, I backed off because I felt like well, you need to absorb what you've gotten so far. I think that's what it was. And, he uh, wanted to do it himself. Yeah, and I wanted to make yeah. sure I wasn't depending I, on I'm like that else. too. I'm I'm like, uh, I want to do it myself first and then I'll ask for help later. It was kind of a multi-purpose thing. It still is. Like I look at uh, the last few videos that I had done, it was about... Yeah, I love that. In my Be the event. I love home. that one. Yeah, <laughs> that was very interesting. You know, that's the only video I ever sat down and watched that I made mm -hmm. and sat down and watched maybe 30 times. It's a great video. The, the reason was is because at that moment, that was what what I needed, mm -hmm. and I can already go back on and look at it. Well, okay, duh. And there's another video that you made where it's just a fire going. You made a couple of them like that. There's one though, I don't remember the title of it. It was just kick ass. I mean, I left a comment saying like it's the best video you ever made. I mean, it was. Uh, I think you were kind of drunk. Well, the good thing <laughs> it was a that, great that video though. Is, is great that, video. That was getting me out of the way to where I actually could connect. Yeah. You need to you need to rewatch that one. I'll I'll look it up and give you the title. That was you were just hitting it. Like one time, remember you uh you and I talked uh, in the hospital, and you were just on fire. I mean, you were just hitting everything. So sometimes you really do tune into your higher self. That's because I'm big time trying to focus on doing that. That's the importance of it. It's some of the things that I was looking at was why I was where I was at, and that's a big thing. Sometimes we we don't want to dwell on where we're at, but we need to go back and focus and pay attention. Um, what's causing it and then move on that's the key yeah. move on Make there was sure and there was one time david when i first got here maybe my second night you called me at 11 o'clock at night out of the blue you never called me like that late except when i was in the hospital and you said you just felt like you needed to talk to me and i was having a panic attack i just started having a panic attack and i remember thinking like my god that was like perfect timing and you were able to talk to me down and you know when you're having a panic attack now you can you can relate to this now right it yeah. you, you want to really talk to somebody yeah. get your mind off things exactly yeah. well you talk me down yeah so yeah i totally get that. and i as a nurse i've talked a bunch of people down and, but you never knew you never knew what that was like though and, i mean it's horrible and i have set that vibration in my mind so if it starts i will stop yeah. that shit yeah that's, that's not happening again that is that's worse than physical pain oh yeah I'd that particular much time you were talking about and and uh, I had a connection with you. It went back to one night I was looking, or a day, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. I was uh, watching one of your live videos when you were in the hospital, and I literally saw me in you. Mm. I, it was literally like, that's me. That's how how dramatic it was. And I think wow. that there was a connection there. And, and my whole thing was, this is something that I'm going through and he's going through. It may be a little bit different situations, but this is all a process. The same type of energy, yeah. yeah. yeah so I, I, I connected a lot with Mary, too. Uh, yeah. She's going through a lot of pain, and, and she also has had anxiety attacks and all that. And then even uh, Shelly. Remember Shelly from California? So it, it was just similar 
people going through similar things, you just kind of connect if you're on the same yeah. energy level and you're trying to work it out. And you know, I think if we're just trying to be our, our higher version of ourselves. And well, seeing how you handled it, you know, like a champ, I mean, you humbled yourself right down and just said, hey, you know what? This is where I'm at, but guess what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to I'm going to get there, and you did. You struggled through it. That, you know, yeah. no one knows that kind of pain until it. It, it was a struggle. I mean, I, you know, there's a few videos I made where I, I was kind of negative, and I I deleted the videos because I'm like, I don't want to put that out. And um, Dominique saw one of them, and she commented like, "What are you making this for? <laughs> you know, who who's going to benefit from this video?" <laughs> and I and I, I I agree with her, and I so I but it's. But but it's, it's real. But it's it's me being real though. But I didn't want to I didn't want to put that out because I'm That's thinking. What was helping me? Exactly. You need people. what the negative videos? Yeah, no, it was real life. Yeah, it was you real. Know, we can sit here and we can pretend to be something, or we can show what's really going on. And but see, David, my my point was though, when I had the wreck from then on, my videos I want to encourage people. I want to lift go. them up, and me bitching, I don't think. People are I, gonna... I think you need to make it short, but I think people need... That's the reason why I did part one, part two, part three. Is because I wanted them to see the process. Yeah, that's true. The, the part one was really uh, bad. Yeah. I want them to see me step it through in real life. And yeah. it, it was real Yeah, maybe you're right. If I, if I would have made it small, but I, I rambled on for 30 minutes in one of the videos. And I'm like, no, and no that's I don't not, that's, People need to see that I'm Naya, but I do that too. That's right. And people and don't know I that. People you think you're a god. You, you've got to... You've and arrived. You know, you've lived with me for. Oh years. hell yes, Listen I can now, relate. I just, you know, she was walking on water two days ago, so. Yeah, I was. <laughs> I mean, she was drowning first. I can, it does I can, not I can, take I can. me long. I'm very good at it, and I'm better than most. But yeah. that doesn't mean it doesn't happen. We all have bad days. Refer back to her videos. Exactly. Yeah. Refer back to. And the I will say this with me, since the camera's on me, is that uh, you know I try to put a positive message and try to be positive, but you know we all have bad days. And there was only like two videos that were negative, and I deleted them. And you know, but I, I think to let people know that you know the the car wreck and all that, there were bad days. I mean, I had anxiety attacks, panic attacks, it pissed me off. You know, I'd be like, you know, I, I remember one night laying down in in the couch when I first got, mm -hmm. and uh, I was just pissed off. I'm like, God damn it, you know, I'm getting an anxiety attack. And this is just after we talked mm -hmm. one night, and I couldn't talk myself out of it. You know, I wanted to do it myself, and I couldn't, so I needed help. You know, and um, took the medication and uh, oh guys but we're yeah, it, it's rough you know it's rough but he had anxiety attacks after an extremely traumatic it was a uh, horrible shock two, horrible shock to less than two weeks including the hospital less than six weeks part of that you were totally under so we're looking at it yeah three weeks that's unbelievable and they went away after about a week of being home maybe a week and a half most people that is not the norm on you. That is magnificent. Yeah. And I know it's frustrating to you. It's very frustrating. The because I never I never had them before. The anxiety that you deal with most people in that kind of traumatizing situation it takes lots longer. Yeah. Most people don't aren't up on their walker this fast. Yeah. Tooling yeah. around like nothing. On the walker. Wrong. It's part of the experience. It's part and it's part of the transition. Right. Yeah. And even the medications. You know, I wanted to wean off all the shit. I thought like I don't need this. I don't need this. And he did. And I'm just, I'm just a naturalist. You know, I'm still taking a lot of meds, I'll, I'll admit, but I'm just taking what I feel I need to. And then there's a couple more I'm going to knock off when I, when the prescriptions You're run out. He's not taking a lot. No, uh, maybe. A lot. You've got five or six. A couple of blood pressure and yeah, you know, a couple for the, the healing still of the bones and stuff. But those yeah. two will be gone. So yeah, be they'll be gone. Just a few. He's only little by little, day by day. Yeah, that's right. Right. Is. Today than we were yesterday. That's the go. spirit. <laughs> it really is the, the our attitude. And I think what helped me a lot was certainly I could feel the love. Of uh, Naya and the and the family collective sending me positive thoughts and healing, I, I could I could feel that. But more importantly, I think with anyone going through stuff, you know, if it's you or Naya, it's how we deal with it, you know, because we are creator gods after all. Yep, you got to do it. Yeah, you know, emotions are real. They're there for a reason. The yeah. thing is not to get stuck in it, exactly. not to dwell in it. Exactly. Well, but they are a way of expressing. They're a way of, of relieving tensions, and well, there's a lot of things. Well, they're just about. like pain. If you step on a nail, you have pain. You have pain to tell you move your foot yep. well emotions the same way it's to tell you if you feel bad then stop doing it it's the same as getting your foot off the nail that's all it's good for that's all it's for that's all it was ever for it was just a way to tell you okay this way is hurting you this way is going to make you feel better that's all they're there for the same as pain and you, know, it is. and you know mary said a good thing last night when we were skyping 
is that she'll get these weird thoughts at night, kind of like an anxiety attack, like out of the blue, these thoughts, and that's what mine was always at nighttime. And she realized like one night, like, you know, where are these thoughts coming from? You know, it's her ego, she's not her ego, and she kind of like would just kind of lift up in, in a sense and, and realize that, hey, you know, I am not my body, I'm not my ego, I'm above that. Right. I should be in control of this, it should not be controlling me. Exactly, that's exactly how you do it. That leads to something that I learned with um, Naya that was, I've been needing this for a while, but it all happened in this right timing, and that is, as a matter of fact, I did a video on uh, your body and, and pain, uh, should I love the pain or something like that, and, it, and I started, didn't even realize it, I think my higher self was trying to speak to me, and said, you know, the pain is there, your body trying to tell you something, and you need to listen to it, you know, and it's taken me from that video, which was a few months ago, till on this trip, to realize that hey, that's not just lip service. That's the truth. Your body is there if you listen and you learn to listen. And and we have a lot of thoughts that come into our, our mind, and we sometimes we don't know what the thoughts are. We don't need to dwell on this a long time. If we just sit down and ask a question, and usually the first thing that comes to your mind it doesn't really matter who it comes from. That's what you go with. But that's that's I'm true. I'm starting to learn about the first thing that pops in your mind is what you got to go with. Got to go with. Yeah. Because when we when when other stuff comes in, that's us. That's ego. That's ego. Mind. Trying to question you, bring you down, confuse you. Just same with intuition. Like, like when you're guessing something, first thing that comes in your mind. Yep. You know, you might be wrong, but usually you're you're dead on. Usually you know. You're right. Yeah. And what I've done is the difference is that I trust it instantly now, all the time. Mm -hmm. I don't think about it at all. I don't question it because I've done it so many times and it's been right, tens of thousands of times She's now. She's in a zone. That now She's I in a zone a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, we had a talk. Well, I was talking to David, and I just helped him listen to. He already listens really well. He just wasn't listening to his physical body. He's pretty good at listening to his higher self. He's pretty good at connecting to source, and he mm. completely ignored his physical body. Wow. And I his physical body, that. guys, listen. This is hilarious. You know, he's a big good guy time. right here, over here, and his higher self big is uh, is feminine. So his higher self. That's the one he was listening. Yeah, that's to. weird. Did you know that? Yeah, uh, no. I knew it ever since yesterday. Yeah, day before. <laughs> yeah. and it's, and it's, she is she is very gentle. She's very feminine. His higher self is, and his physical self is very masculine and pissed yeah, off. Yeah, what what a, a dichotomy. I mean, a girly okay. girl to a it's big. It's a good one. Yeah, it, it, it's appropriate for yeah, him. It's it really is. Now the girl Michelle and Sandra and I were talking because we were talking about how if you ask your higher self a question that you're supposed to figure out, that your higher self is trying to get you to figure out, they will absolutely laugh at you every time. And most of the time I want to kick my higher self's ass because he is <laughs> an and it just pisses me off. So yeah. we go to war all the time, him and I. So what do you say about laughing? So, so your higher self is laughing at you? Oh yeah, they laugh. They won't answer, they'll just laugh. Because the remember... The is always, you're supposed to figure this out, don't ask me. Because I want to say, the first one of the first people I like, talked to in the hospital was you, mm -hmm. and you were laughing at my ass. Well, that's because I I'm like, oh, Naya, I'm in the hospital, and uh, this and this, and she's like, oh, I was wondering what took you so long. Because <laughs> I knew you were going to create that. I'm thinking, like, this bitch is laughing at my ass. <laughs> I couldn't help it. I wanted that's to laugh funny. when everybody was freaking out. Yeah, everybody was like, uh, oh, you're all right. And here she is laughing, you know. <laughs> and the next thing you said was you remember the whole conversation, right? So, yeah, you understood. So anyway, I was listening to his higher self, and he was asking questions, and his higher self turned it back over. His okay. higher self was doing this, <laughs> like twittery, <laughs> and well, he was la she was laughing at him, wouldn't tell him, but it was like, and my higher self was like, <laughs> <laughs> and his was like, <laughs> you're having a good time up there. And I was like, oh, hello, how that was because it does seem weird on this big guy over here. Yeah. So then I went down to the physical self, and it was like, oh, and I was like. He was asking questions, and most of what he was at talking about was about his body. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So his high, his uh, physical self was really loud. So I was really mostly connecting him with his physical self during our conversation. Mm -hmm. The other two he pretty much had down. He just wanted and verified, really. Physical self is the one that he had totally disconnected from. So that's really what the most that happened. And then after that, he just took off and has been doing it ever since. But his physical self, though, for years... You inhaled like toxins from your job? Yeah, or something? I, I was a paint contractor. I, I did uh, decorative concrete work. I took concrete driveways or swimming pool decks or whatever and turned it, it made it look like um, stain, you know, stained it. 
with a, a strong solvent made it look like brick or tile in different patterns. And my hands was in that all day long, every day for almost uh, 10 years. Wow. And I inhaled it and I absorbed it and uh, it, it made you high as a kite. And I'd come home and my, my ex-wife would, would say, have you been drinking? <laughs> and I'd say, not today. But no, but then I was in the church, I didn't drink hardly at all. But still, yeah. that stuff absorbed in me. And now keep think about this. You, you know about mineral spirits and you know about um, paint thinner. Yeah. They, they'll penetrate into certain things, but this particular solvent is made to penetrate into concrete and actually carry a stain into it and actually change the concrete, the color of it itself. So it mm -hmm. absorbs in there. You know, paint will lay on top, mm -hmm. but this stuff actually absorbed in, into concrete. So it wasn't that big a deal for it to absorb into my skin, sure. into my lungs, and so on and so mm -hmm. forth. So when she had said that, instantly that's what came to my mind. Now in California, obviously, that, that there's a lot of different things in California you can't use. It's a very toxic product, and it causes cancer usually within just a few years. Wow. And, uh, and this is 10 years ago? No, you? I was in it 10 years. This was in the, between 1990 and 2000. Which means it would have been the full, yeah. full You array. said something. You said something funny in your Elevator 8. You, you looked at him, and you saw in, in, in the, his body all that stuff, and you're like, and it's really cool. Oh, but it's not cool for him. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. So. Oh, you'll, you'll laugh at that. <laughs> yeah, well, it was. Yeah, I mean, it was cool for me because I'd never seen it. Before. <laughs> that is the reason why you are still alive is because your physical self is m seriously masculine. Because if it would have been flipped, oh, you would have died of cancer a long time ago. Yeah. Because the feminine side would not have been able to handle what you my did. My body to is it. tough. Your your body is and very. And very I tough. am thanking my body and apologizing to my body, and I'm really connecting. Uh, yeah. This that's the main thing right there because for the last year, even when I first met you, I was already looking to detox, and you know I kept thinking, well, it's not just my liver. I've got to detox my whole body. So of course my thing is try to go and do something drastic. You know, find that one thing that's going to be that quick fix. And Naya pointed out something that was very true was that it took you a lot longer. It wasn't just that. It, that was the you know the xylene was what really pushed the envelope but but I've always done things like that with my body and all but that was I'm losing mm. my train decades. Of it took decades it took to decades get to get that I think me and you are very similar we have very rugged bodies and we've really abused our bodies for the years I used to work in machine shops and there was this coolant and it would say on the label you know it don't inhale this it can cause cancer and I did that for years you know and you can't you can't and his higher self was going I mean it was really cranky he was going, look, because he was very much demanding, fix this now and do it the way I want it done. Mm. And his higher self was going, look, MF, see how it's your did, video. Did, did that really, uh, it, did yep, the higher, wow. He didn't say MF, but very much the vibration of, well, that's the I have been taking care of this. I've been keeping you alive. I've been dealing with the crap you've thrown to me for decades. Now you decide to change your mind. You want it done right now, really? And that's when people start aging. When they yeah. start deciding, well, I'm going to be using my body for decades. Now I want it fixed now. The body has to do what you tell it to, but if you tell it to do it wrong, it will crash and burn. It has well, to do it its way. i gotta, I got to say one thing, though. This is on me. Be careful what you ask for your higher self, especially if you're arguing and yelling at your higher self. <laughs> you will get what you ask for. Yes, and it may not be the way you like it. <laughs> oh, so. I do have something to say about that. Okay. I will tell you that I've been around two really really long-term humans now and for you star seeds this is for star seeds long-term humans because they have really good practice here they have this ability to scream and holler and demand when they request something with a lot of energy it comes out as a vibration of a demand I mean a heavy duty cannot get around it demand it goes out the law of attraction law of attraction complies when a star seed tries to do the same thing they almost always send what looks like the same thing, ah, yes. but it's not. It's out of fear, fear every based. time. Yeah. A long-term human, no fear. I want this done. I want it done now. No fear. Do it. Do it now. It gets done. So if you guys are confused because you see one person doing it this way and they get what they want, another person doing it what looks like the same exact way and it crashes their lives, more than likely the one that got what they wanted is a long-term human and they vibratorily, instinctively know how to put the demand in it. Because especially with with uh, New Agers, it's it's all about love and light. Well, when these guys get what they want, this is not love and light, this is demand. I'm in charge, 
you'll do as I say, and you'll do it now. That's mm -hmm. the vibration that comes out, and that's when these guys get what they want. It is that kind of a. But is it really wise to do that? Is if you've got, if you can do it with demand, with no fear at all, then absolutely do it away. Uh, be careful what you ask for. You could have asked for, the, you could have demanded a lottery ticket. Yeah, time. yeah. I mean, I, I did it. I did it kind of. I really wasn't thinking. I just, you know, spoke out of anger, yeah. and uh, I got exactly what I asked for. And what's great was your intent. Your intent is coming out to be what you wanted. Yep, yep. Yeah. And and to be in good health too. Yes, that's so. that's true. Which that's where that's how the heart attack happened and all that because really I, the heart attack wouldn't have been there's no way I would have uh, you would never even even if I would have won a lottery ticket there's no way they would have uh, unless I would have got for a full checkup but I wasn't going to do that you know I probably would have had a heart attack and died yeah. you know and that and that's the the point what your demand was I want to stop work I want yep. enough money to survive uh, I want I want to be a kid again and just you know get up yep. when I want to get up but you d you didn't give any more than that which is why right. you that's, didn't that's, get any more than that it's true because you got just enough just enough to stay home and and, and then I told my higher self, like, and then I want, and don't fuck me. That's what I said. Oh, oops, yeah. Sorry, don't fuck me over. Well, I you can cuss. Help. It's always an adult channel. I just did. And, uh, yeah, that's exactly what I said. And don't exactly fuck me either. Give me good health. And then he came here and he said, <laughs> I, I don't understand why I had the second heart attack. And I'm looking at him because we've had conversations. Yeah, it totally and slipped going, my mind. And I'm going, a uh, dude. Yeah, um, like that. You almost had two carotids completely blocked. Which mm. is you bad. can't yeah. do those at the same time. You had a heart attack at the wreck. Perfect timing. Yeah, absolutely. Stint number one. Absolutely. You had heart attack number two while you in the cardiac unit. And I was on the phone with you that night. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we we hung up and it started feeling tight and I, I fell asleep and I woke up about two in the morning and it was it was and worse. How tight was that opening up? That's right. Yeah, that's what it was. Yep. That's and that's what it was. so they went back in so they could put the second so stint in. So sometimes pain is a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, here I was in the cardio ward, kind of scared to call a nurse. Yeah. I'm like, where the fuck else are you going to be? <laughs> you know, you're in the cardio ward of the hospital. With chest pain. With, with, and, and all these IVs on you, it's like they're going to do work on That's you. That's perfect, man. Yeah, you couldn't ask for a better scenario. I don't know why that happened. That's like being hungry and being in a restaurant. So what am I going to do now? Yeah. <laughs> So confused as to why this happened like that. I'm going really. Oh, that's good. Seriously. And the thing that I did, thanks to, to Naya and my higher self, and mostly my body, mm -hmm. is I finally learned, and my body actually, I had a little conversation. wasn't much of a conversation, it's just a couple of statements. Mm -hmm. And my my higher my body says, you do your part, and I'll do my part. Basically, just don't put any more of that crap in your system Very because good. there's a lot of things that when your body has reached its maximum toxicity and you continue to do things sometimes even like just ibuprofen or something like that it your body ha can do one thing or the other yeah it you know if you let's say it just it's detoxed a, a certain amount and then you put five ibuprofen in your body mm -hmm. in my situation that mm -hmm. was very good what did you just say I said it can, it can only detox or, or fight whatever you. No, you said out. survive or heal. Survive or heal. That, that was that's very that's good. All, that's all it can do. Survive so if, or heal. Survive just kind of keeps you as you are, but healing actually is exactly. A lot of people detox, but they do exactly what he said. So they'll detox for a week, but then they'll go do something stupid like have three beers and two ibuprofen. Right, you just go right. Going, or processed food. You go right, right off the wagon. And yeah. I went good. Now you put everything back in that you just took out, mm -hmm. now you're back at square one and you can't figure out why it's not getting any better. So well, processed food is bad. If you drink the wrong water, it's got toxins in it. The air that you breathe has got toxins in it. You've got to give as much relief as you can because you've been overloading it for so long. Mm -hmm. You've been putting a teaspoon of sugar in the gas tank every day for years and your engine is so forgiving. Well, tell us what we do then. Give, it, us a, give us a crash course in detoxing. Well, that's a, it, you need to listen to your body. Okay. So basically you need to throw out all of the, the diets. You need to throw out all of the, you need to have a whole mess of like teas, a whole mess of herbs, a whole mess of, of vitamins, anything. And then you walk every day, Essential every oils. moment. Essential oils. And you ask your body, what can I do to help? And you listen and you do what it says. You don't become a vegan. So when your body walks by and says, please, I, I need a steak. I need it right now. Right. So you, Sorry, I can't. I'm a vegan. You don't become a meat eater. Very and your true. body says, please, I need you to do fruits and vegetables for one week. And you go, too bad. I only eat. I have to have meat every day. You've got to listen to the body. <laughs> got so point. bringing this full circle, there was two different things uh, that happened in this, this last few days on this trip. Number one, Naya was able to connect with the consciousness of Georgia. And I was able to get my body was able to get to me to get me to be able to listen to get you know this 
situation and give me a plan. Because you have to have a plan, otherwise you're just helter-skelter. My body kept saying, help me help you. Help me help you. I, like I think that. I heard that in a movie once. Like that. But uh, that's basically what it was doing. And this trip facilitated that. And it took so much pressure off of me and the, the ability to move forward it's been simplified. Oh, what an amazing uh, vacation. What an amazing yeah, trip. Right. For everybody, for you, for David, I'm sure Sandra and Michelle and yeah. Daniel. Yeah, everybody. What is your plan? My plan is to live little by little, day by day, a little happier today than it was yesterday. Oh, gee, where'd you get that from, huh? <laughs> and you're, and you're, he's listening to everybody. And yeah. you, I, he's really good at hearing everyone. Now, you guys need to know that when you ask a question, the question is, Everybody wants to know who's answering you. What's that instant? Well, mm -hmm. if you do it right, the best case scenario is to go to source. Yep. Because source does not stop. I mean, it's like Google search. It does not judge. If you get the right question, it will get the right answer every time. There's no, there's no resistance there at all. That's best case. That's what I do now all the time. I have arguments with my higher self. But your higher self, remember, here's source all the way up here. All the way down, 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 down here is you, and right here is your higher self. So it is trying to get you to do things that Source doesn't care about. Source is going, is going to say, hey, if you've connected with me, ask a question, you can have it. If you're smart enough to ask me a question and hear it, you get the answer. Your higher self will push you. It will say, no, you try. You try. You try to figure it out. You know the answer. And, let's, and if you ask the right question, it will give you a clue. But ultimately, it's pushing you to figure it out. Yeah. Your body is trying to get you to figure out how to talk to it. So, and also, you got other players in this game. There's not just yeah. physical. There's not higher self. There's not source. If you have made the mistake of calling on angels oh. or violet flames or Pleiadians or Jesus, so that's or a bad. Capola, that's a bad thing. That's a well, then, whenever you ask a question, guess who also pops in immediately? Uh, Whoever you've connected good, with. This is a good uh, transition here. Uh, for many, many years, being with my history, being in the church, I called upon angels every single day for almost four years, yeah. just about every day. Yeah, we're taught that. For five years, I'm talking about the most recent since I've been in Georgia for seven years. Mm -hmm. Every morning before I left, I always said, I surround myself with angels, keep me from this, that, and the other. Yeah. So that's something that I've had to wing them and say, hey, enough, yeah. we don't need you. We surrender so, our own power, yeah. and we yeah. rely on, on mm -hmm. these. Now, well, it's, there's, there's a process, like, uh, they, they help to figure out what to do, is different than go do this. But walk. it's still an intercessory. And like I don't need that. if you, you pray, if you pray him. to Jesus, I can go straight to source. Yeah. I don't need to pray to this guy. Then this guy That's can right. relay I'm if so he even glad does. You that, up. that was That's meant. Right. To, that was meant to be. It right is. There. It is. It is something that people need to be aware of because then they're going to come back and they're going to go. I asked the question. I got an immediate answer, and then I did that, and it was wrong. Okay. Yeah. Who are you connected with? Who do you need to unattach from? Mm -hmm. Until you own yourself and say. I don't need any help. That's a deep point. Deep I don't point. need any help. Well, what about ever. asking your pub friends? I really, you can talk to your pub friends all you want, but they're they're probably they're not going to be talking to you. They are surrounding your higher self. They are, think of it like this, um, like I've said, they're Houston. They're Houston. Oh, uh, yes. All yes. working together. They've yes. all got their jobs and they're working hard. They don't have time to talk to you. That's friends. a great analogy. Now, yeah. can I talk to my pub friends? Yeah, but I'm further along. I don't ask now, them do they, I just visit them. Do they, if you did ask, would your pub friends... Oh, no, they would refer the question to my higher self. Oh, okay. It all goes through the higher self. Okay. They would not interfere. They're doing other things. So basically, let's just go straight to the higher self. Screw all these okay. intercessories, the you angels. Don't even, you don't even need to go to your higher self. You, what? You need to connect and Labels. begin to listen to it, but understand in the game that it is a part of you like your physical self is. So you're uh, going to listen to everything your very physical good. self says. You're going to listen to it when it comes to physicality, but when it starts talking to you about, when you're talking about having an OBE, there your physical self is going, oh, hell no. You aren't leaving this body. So you don't listen to that part of it. You go, you're over these guys. You are, you become, you pull back so that the higher self, the physical self, all these other entities in your life, you're over them. And in that moment, you connect to Source. Because you rise above all of that. You realize that within me is a child, an employee, a daughter, a mother. None of those rule me. I rule all of them. 
So the higher self does not rule you. It is one of those aspects. Your physical self does not rule you. You do. You run the higher self. Now, the physical self can only do so much. Mm -hmm. The higher self can only do so much. That's why they laugh. It's very irritating, and that just means that you're not in the right place. Just like, okay, if, if, I, told my fire, if I told my physical body, all right, tomorrow morning we're going to get up at 5 o'clock, we're going to run 10 miles. My physical self would roll on the floor laughing. <laughs> Mine <laughs> is too. <laughs> it's like, that is not going to happen, and it's not a reasonable request. Well, the same thing is true if you ask the wrong question of your higher self. They roll laughing. Now, once you get past that, you don't ask the child part of you to go in and go to work for you. You don't ask the work part of you to go care for your ailing mother. It's the same concept. Instead of, see, I can't. I'm using higher self because they have used higher self. But that implies better than. It's not better than. It's a different aspect of you. It's a different part of you that's ap operating from a different perspective. And it's higher in a way because it operates a lot of aspects and a lot of timelines. But it's not better than you from this perspective. It's not. You have to get the hang of this. That you, this you that is talking to me, you are a god, damn it. You are a God. And I don't mean God with a little G. I mean God with 14,000 big G's, big O's, big D's. You can't even think that big. You don't need... Oh, my God, that's blasphemy. Yeah, well, How dare, this, blasphemy how dare this woman say this? How can you blaspheme yourself? I don't know. I guess it's possible yeah, Our God selves are so much bigger than Jehovah God. It's not even funny. Trust me, I've been there. I met him. He's not that badass. And he's a pain in the butt. <laughs> And you are much bigger than that, and you've got to get the hang of that. You've got to own it in order to start creating effectively. As long as you still believe that you're littler, then there is always an aspect of worry, anxiety, and fear. Worry and anxiety and fear is a telltale sign that you do not believe you're a god. Because no god has anything to worry or be anxious. Very or fear, good. Very ever. good. Very good. What is there anything to fear about? I'm a god. Try, try me. Come on, let's play. Oh, be careful. Been there, done that. I'm not oh, afraid she's of... gonna have hell tomorrow. You wait. I'm not afraid of anything. Now I'll be having a panic want. attack tomorrow. Now the funny thing is, because I can honestly say that because mm -hmm. of my history, I can honestly say that I won't draw any of it because in the law of attraction, I'm sending out. I have no fear. I have right. nothing to worry. No one it's scares very, me. That's very true. So therefore, but when, no one when we when me. we forget to do that, though, then shit does scare and us. And you will, and you will fall down, and little things will happen. The trick is not to say, "Oh no, I'm not a god anymore." Yeah, you are. You're just fucked up, God. Yeah. yeah. So fix it. And for those of us who do uh, call upon angels and such, or did, in my case, um, or whatever, uh, Jehovah or, or Jesus, it's. They will give you some things, and, and they, will yeah, they will answer some of your yeah. questions, but you're falling back into that game. Yeah. You're falling back into that game of needing someone Right, else. you need someone. You know, back in 97, I had low blood sugar attacks, which is very similar to a panic attack. And uh, this was when I was, you know, in my Christian days, and I would just pray to God for help. And I felt so alone because I, I, didn't, I didn't feel anything. And that was really the start of me questioning yeah. my faith. Interestingly enough, I have a new follower a new email and I will not use her name because they haven't asked for permission sure. but she is just came up with that that thing now I've been not on the internet as you know mm -hmm. because I've been kind of busy and then I was down there and busy but I pulled up my my emails and she had written me a long email I told her to, to write to me because I knew she needed to write to me so she wrote me this long email that basically said um, I've looked through all this stuff, I've been through all this stuff, I've listened to what people have said, including you, but the only time that I've ever been happy, and she's late 30s, still young, the only time I've really been at peace was when I was praying. So she said, what do I do? If that's out, of, out the window, what do I do? There's no peace. And I said, you're young. And I said, I was into it, I, I'm a lot older than you are, and I was into Christianity, not age-wise, but I started at birth. Yeah. So, and it didn't end until yeah, your, your dad was a preacher, in case right. people don't know. So, I was into it. I did heavy duty um, praying. I prayed to God all the time. Now, that works for a while, depending upon how heavy a prayer you are. Mm -hmm. But about the time you hit your thousandth prayer, where you get the uh, churches, they say, if you don't get it, he said no. 
about the thousand no you start to get annoyed yeah and about the ten thousand no when you've got about five yeses out of ten thousand you're beginning to wonder what in the hell you're doing Absolutely. and about twenty thousand prayers you're going fucking i hate you goddamn shit and you get resentful it happens. does not work yeah, that's, that's the whole true. plan so they lure you in with this possibility of of people that are around you in this group this church and this was what I found out in Georgia, by the way. They, they lure you into this church where everybody says, you need to follow the Lord, whatever church it is, and then they fight amongst themselves. Especially yeah. in Georgia, there's a bunch of groups that all are all place. Christian, and they all fight amongst themselves. Mm -hmm. and Methodist, the denomination Baptist, means Baptist, division. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Division. Yeah. So they, they set that up. But you've still got your group, right? And the group comes together, and you all talk. And everybody says, pray to the Lord, pray to Jesus, and you get what you want. Now, in that group, depending on how big the group is, you're going to have one person, every time you meet, say, I had my prayer answered. I, I mean, absolutely phenomenally smart on the old Jehovah monotheistic yeah. religion. Right. Now, you're in a group, oh, yeah. you're taught... You need to follow this guy. You need to pray to him, and you will get what you want. And every time you come together, somebody gets what they right, want. Absolutely. Now, you're not getting what you want, but you keep saying, well, there's two things at work here. If I don't follow this God, especially if it's been passed down for generation after generation, then I'm going straight to hell. My family won't have anything to do with me. I won't have any more friends. Yeah. Probably lose business. Or, or you know what they say now, uh, real quickly is, when you you see people that get what their prayer answered, you think, "Well, I, I must not have faith. I, right. I, I need exactly. more faith. I need to work so on my." So you're taught that you're doing something wrong. Right. right. So so here you've got this circumstance, and you can't leave it because you'll lose all this and you'll go to hell. Yep. And you you have enough faith in it that you can't leave it. But as the years go by and you don't get your prayers answered, but they do, mm -hmm. or maybe you do just once in a while, just like they do. But it looks like everybody's getting theirs and I'm not getting mine. So, I'm either not good enough or this is all a lie. Mm -hmm. Either way, you're screwed. Yeah. If, if you play out either one of these, so what do you do? If you, if you believe it's a lie, 